This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. Believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. It's Eric Nagel. It starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, universe. the next voice you hear... It's Eric Nagel. And thank you, Scott Shannon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the program. I am Eric Nagel. Over there, if you see Jordan, tell him hello. It is hot. Hi, everybody. It is very hot. Actually, our low hit a new record. It's not going to get any cooler than 97 degrees. That's what you get for living our in the desert. Suck. And who doesn't live <laughs> in a desert, he lives in a uh, an urban jungle, if you will, is Gittles, where it's yes. also 97 degrees. How does that yeah. work? I don't know. It's been pretty hot, and uh, because of the smoke, like every night, the sun just looks like a giant orange as it's setting. Like it's kind of unsettling every day. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's been pretty hot and uncomfortable. Walked around a lot in Manhattan today for some god no unknown reason, and uh, yeah, it was stupid. And I came home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did that Monday. I had a couple of meetings before going to work at the other place, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm wearing I'm wearing pants. Don't you hate pants? I don't oh, have that I drop. I got to get that drop. Um, but I was walking around. It was they said it the the, the real feel, which I don't get that bullshit. But the, the real feel is like it was over a hundred degrees in Manhattan. And that night, Monday night, I get home. I'm not feeling too right. So I'm just sitting there. I'm like, all right. I just kind of went to bed. Got up the next morning, went outside, took the dog outside. And all of a sudden, my head started spinning and I started violently vomiting. And I was like, this is not good. And I'm trying to crawl back up the stairs to get back into my place and uh, just took drank a huge thing of water, took some Advil, went to sleep. Uh, next thing I know, it was 5 p.m. And uh, I got up and I was just chugging either water or Gatorade back and forth, just trying to get everything right again. And uh, yeah, no fucking joke. It felt like I was poisoned. Was yeah, was, was it the heat, heat or was it the air quality? I was say, yeah, like heat stroke, heat exhaustion, dehydration, that shit will fuck you up. Yeah, it and did. it comes on like suddenly too. Like yeah, you, you don't, don't realize, realize it, it, and then you got like a bad headache, and then you're, yeah, you just don't feel good. No matter what you do, it's not going to help. Well, that was my Tuesday with the heat. And then yesterday, coming back from the city, like Gittle said, I got off the train, I'm walking over to my car, and I see just a red fireball in the, in the, in the horizon go down and I was trying to remember wait if it's red at night is that okay or if it's red in the morning there's red in the morning sailors take warning red at night sailors delight I couldn't think of it at the time and I just went oh shit is there a storm like a hurricane coming and I was like oh no there's not and then I look in the uh I look online and apparently there's something that's heading towards Puerto Rico and whatever else so just Bart's comet yeah it is it's always Bart's comet <laughs> Uh, welcome to the program, everybody. Follow us across the board on all the social medias at It's Eric Nagel. We're on all of the accounts. If you're listening to us on the iHeartRadio app, we do appreciate that. Tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And uh, if you want to join us each and every week as we do the show, you can hop into our live rooms over at Twitch, over at YouTube. I think it's still on Twitter. Yeah, it's still on Twitter. Uh, we might be going to Kick. Seems to be a platform that we might pick up to. What the fuck is Kick? It's a competitor <laughs> to Twitch, so we might be doing that. And uh, we've the Rumble thing. It, we, we've been working on. Apparently, you can't just automatically set it. You have to manually do it every time. And who's got the the patience to deal with that? So. Maybe in some time. We don't know. So anyway, welcome to the program. We are all here. Uh, we're here. We're queer. We don't want any more bears. Get used to it. Now. Um, I wanted to talk to you, Gittles, because something... We usually don't go into this route, but it, it's interesting because it, it, it happened not far from where you and I grew up on Long Island. And in this happened while we were in high school. So this was qu quite a big deal. Um, the murders the over, killer? yeah, over at uh, Gilgo Beach out on Long I Island. Think it happened when we were in high school. I think that it happened in like 2004. No, first one was 1996. Was it? Yeah, uh, I, thought, I thought it was like early 2000s. No, no, this was while we were going because I remember. Um, I think it was the the paper out in Long Island Newsday. There was a, there were, I remember reading something where they were asking people not to drive over to that area to go through the dunes, looking yeah. for people. Because after the second or the third girl was found in that area, 
Uh, we're talking about this uh, person. It was a serial killer that up until recently had gone uh, uncaught, unknown, and uh, was uh, dumping girls' bodies in this uh, Dune Road Beach area of Gilgo yep. Beach. And I, if I'm thinking correctly, is that it's an area between like Jones Beach and Robert Moses, right? It's, it's on it's that ocean, strip. It's Ocean Parkway. It's just, yeah, yeah. There's just, it's just a desolate strip. There's no there's no lights. It's just open road. Yeah. Like, so away from public. Uh, you could ride it at night. And, you know, the most you'll see is a deer, maybe some people fishing on the beach. Like and night. there's no turnoff either. That yeah, goes for several miles yeah. from the Jones Beach area to the Robert Moses area. <laughs> it's just one straight strip of, you know, two lanes this yeah. way, two the lanes four, that the, way. So, Eric, the four murders that he is being charged with all happened in, like, 2009. No, there was the... Yeah, but there's 11 total. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't know if he was related to those. Okay, when we when I, I was I was a senior in high school when when this started going on, I remember distinctly that area. It they says, were finding I'm looking up right here. It says on I'm, 1997 Hempstead Lake State Park, not on the dunes, a different place. No, in Gilgo Beach, that strip there between yes. Jones Beach and Robert Moses, they had a thing where they were asking people not to go out there and just start looking for people because it was still an ongoing thing that they were investigating people were showing up in that area because it's right near between two of the major beaches on long island that people would just drive there pull over and just start looking through thinking they were going to find people in that area um all right so if if the ones he's being charged with saying is like that i understand but what he is charged with is for the four people not the other people from like the early 90s who they might not be related because it was just it was i don't know if it is or not right so, but that's that's all I'm saying. Was he's only charged for those four as of right now. Well, I wanted to talk about that because the f- I think who was I having this conversation? Some uh, somebody in the audience says no. We were having this conversation about um, <clears throat> if you watch those old murder mystery shows or those cop shows on on TV, like through the '60s, '70s, things like that. Yeah. Uh, Columbo, Beretta, those kind of things. Their way of oh, deducting. Let me, let, me, let me ask you this. Yeah. Where were you on the night of the murder? Their their way of Ex- deducting their way of de- oh, um, how somebody committed a crime or somebody killed somebody or whatever was always with reasoning um misdirection things like that it wasn't really science it was just psychology right yeah but nowadays the psychology doesn't matter because the science nails it before they even get a chance to like all right we know who it is we know they did it we need to find them so now when you find them it's not like you're trying in most cases you're not trying to pull information out of them they have it already so they they bring you in the point i'm trying to get at is like because of closed caption cameras and DNA stuff and the way, and we'll get to some of the details on this case, there's really no way to do anything anymore and, and stay away for as long as this guy did. Like, I'm amazed this guy uh, evaded everything as long as they did. But you can't really just go and commit a crime or, or do something like that anymore with and thinking like, well, if I drive out of state or if I live in the middle of nowhere, I won't get caught anymore. It, it just doesn't work that way anymore. Not with I that mean, attitude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm sure that there's people who still try and stuff like that. I'm sure like, you know, they think about all those things, but it's probably just people who are already like off the grid anyway. You don't even know who they are. You know, it's like people who live in the woods or some shit <laughs> oh my god molly did i say closed cap i mean closed circuit did. i did say closed caption cameras <laughs> yeah you did okay that might be a show title okay go ahead sorry <laughs> but i don't know like, it was interesting how they like i was reading about this case and how like they were tracing burner cell phones from manhattan to like right. massapequa area and then they kept like they kept getting the same pings from like the same towers and how they tracked it down like block by block to like this guy's house basically and then like tied DNA from like pizza crust to like the yeah, murders they and stuff were... like that. And then his wife's hair happened to be hairs that were found on the body that were never identified, like that they couldn't figure it out. It was his wife. Like, All right, that that's new to me. That I that was that came out. It was today. his wife's hair, not his hair. It was his wife's hair. Oh, okay. That's interesting. That he too. inadvertently had on attached to his clothes or something like that. Yeah, that got onto the victim. There was like five <laughs> hairs. Like, how do you find five hairs? It, well, to be fair, That's there's people. There's it. people who go to 
just in public they go to work they go to stores and they've got if they have a white cat a white dog they've just I'm covered in they're pet covered hair in pet yeah. hair anyway and then they just go this pet is too right much now. to even deal with i don't give a fuck i'm going out so imagine yeah. you commit a murder and they're like we found some hair and we go and test it and it's it's like canine and that's the only right. clue that George. you have to go for. It's like, well, a dog apparently killed nine hookers and dumped them yeah. on the beach. <laughs> that becomes an S- SVU episode or something <laughs> like that. Like, that's the twist at the end. Like, yeah, they traced him back to his cat hair. <laughs> yeah, they arrest him. They're getting ready to, to go to the judge to file something, and they're going to prosecute. And then one of the lab technicians runs in and speaks to the detective. It's like, we, we, we can't hold him. Why? It's canine hair. Huh? Yeah. Dung, dung. And it goes to the next yeah. scene. <laughs> and they're like, now they got to start all over again. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was funny too because I saw like a video and they're like, you know that this happened on Long Island because there's police investigating the crime scene and the block party is still happening. Well, like the block- <laughs> you're just jumping ahead on all of this stuff. Well, here, I, so. you didn't tell me we were going to talk about the serial killer tonight, so no, I it's fair. It's fine. Details, it's fair. It's know. fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, that's something else we're going to get to too. That apparently, it was not going to stop a party that they had planned because there's some news <laughs> clips from. Uh, I don't know if it was national, but it was definitely local. And then people out there with their cell phones standing in front of uh, the guy's house. Uh, it was one of the news clips I saw where th- they're trying to report. And in the back, you're just seeing lights. So you're thinking, oh, red and blue and everything. It must be emergency lights. And then they turn. It's not. There's a fucking house party like the two party. doors down still going. And everyone. <laughs> it's like when people have those par- ragers when a hurricane's coming and they don't yeah. get out of the way. Like, well, we may lose the house. So let's just live it up as, as this is going on. <laughs> They're doing that. Um, <clears throat> so this guy gets caught. New information, which I wasn't aware of today, that it was his wife's hair, not his hair. How did they trace it to her? Um, to her, then is it one of those cases of like they did a twenty three and Me and it's on public record or that, something? That I don't, I don't one hundred percent know. They said it was like unidentified hairs that were there, and then like they were, I guess they were tracing it, probably going over evidence from his house and like stuff that they collected and probably matched it there or something like that. <laughs> Here's a quote from his wife. Uh, she told the cops, "Okay, it is what it is." Like, really? <laughs> yeah. Your husband killed, like, we know four people, but look, there's 11 in right. this that, that we're looking at him at, but we got him for four. Yeah, what do you want me to do? It is what, what if it she's, is. What if so, she's right. involved? That's why her hair is on it, and she's just, like, getting off the hook right now. Like, oh, yep, I guess that's, oh, my husband's a serial killer. Divorce. Sure. Gotta go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah so I guess the commissioner, Rodney Harrison, was like, when we told the wife she was shocked, she was embarrassed, but there was a point where we showed her certain pictures, and she said, Okay, it is what it is. That's ridiculous. Like, well, um, anyway, the block party wasn't the same without Rex's potato salad this year. You know, everyone was just like, it was like it was a good block party, but you know, it was right. missing something. You know, and and uh, his oatmeal cookies were the twelve dollars that usually fills that gap at the bake sale, and this, yeah. this year, will the children will have to go without. <laughs> um, th- by the way, they're not an attractive couple. Both of I, them are. They like if you grew his hair out more he looks like her and she looks like him it's one of those cases where when a couple's been around each other too long they start to look like each other yeah right. they're both just equally hideous like they're the same height he's a tall dude and he's a big guy she's a tall dude and a big guy as well and their hair is just all disheveled they they're just messes uh they they didn't show anything from inside the house at least from the coverage i saw but they did said it was almost like a hoarder situation like they have a lot of shit in that house that uh they could barely move through um i think also go ahead Oh no! I think I think it was pretty funny because I was reading a report and like the the police detective was just like, "This is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my career," and and uh, the details of this case are sickening. It's like, yeah, dude, not too many people work on serial killer cases. You know what I mean? It's just like, of course you're gonna see some crazy fucking shit, dude. Like, how many serial killers have they caught in this country? Like, I, like a dozen maybe. You right. know, Like, there's not many people who are privy to this kind of a thing. Of course, it's going to be fucking shocking. <laughs> I, uh, I, I know right. a couple people who work for companies that where all they specialize is true crime podcasts and like a high level of doing it oh, too, yeah. like an NPR thing or a serial, like that kind of production level high up stuff. <laughs> right. And I asked them, I go, so who's getting the rights to the official Gilgo beach murders podcast, whatever they call him or name him, whatever the slug line is going to be. 
and he goes, oh, we're already working on that. Of, co- of course you are. Of course you are. The I second was say, he was what caught. What are they going to call him? Yeah. Like the Gilgo killer? Yeah. Some, well, some a, a friend of mine on Long Where's Island, the beach? Well, a friend of mine on Long Island has had a podcast for the last five years about this serial killer, like trying to find him and stuff like that. And when the serial killer was caught, he was on like every news channel talking about it. It's right. pretty crazy. Well, somebody's so going to buy the rights to him then, out. you know. Yeah. But somebody has the official because uh, for the other guy that... Uh, Lawyer down in North Carolina, oh, Mon- Manchester, Man- Man- Mansfield, Montague, whatever. yeah, whatever his name I was. was. His, whatever his last name. There was. was the official podcast that was about that, and then Netflix had the official documentary about that. Yeah. So th- this is the thing now. There's never been a hotter time to jump on these properties with the SAG strike, the, uh, right. the Writers Guild strike, Broadway's now going on strike, everything that's happening. Uh, there's no content, no programming, so we might as well just you know. Fuck real reality television. You're going for real life stuff. The reality script yeah, shit. Yeah, but this is like this is that is real. It's the only thing that is real in the reality TV. No, like, I know. True like, crime stuff. I liked working on it when I worked in TV because it was real, but it was fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see where that goes. Um, but the but back to the thing where you can't commit anything. You can't get away with almost anything anymore because if you blow Are a you red. Planning something, Eric? No, I'm just saying. Like, okay, I'm thinking, thinking back to like. Remember 1984, the the story where they're like, well, the government's going to have all this surveillance and everything, but it's the government has some of it, but a lot of it is self-imposed because you're using cell phones that track you. And when you post things online, that's documenting your whereabouts. And now trying in the in this day and age that the, the fact that people are even trying to do serial killer stuff or trying to do other heinous crimes and think that they'll get away like it's like trying to rob a bank remember the old the old stories of movies and tv was somebody was going to hold up a bank and that episode was how they dealt with the bank robbery you there's no way you can even try to go in and hold up a bank anymore you have to do like mission impossible level movie stunts and 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 planning and stuff like that to even try to attempt to do something you get caught in every direction from something simple as uh, people stealing stuff at a Walgreens all the way up to trying to rob a bank, trying to uh, blow a, a traffic light and claiming that you didn't see the light or you didn't do it. Well, we got the tickets. We got you on Easy Pass. We got you. Even if you you, you held up this store and you, you uh, bodega and you took their money, they just trace CCTV and cameras from other businesses and keep going down the line till they find out where you went. Like, it's impossible to do anything anymore. It, yeah. It's just interesting. And the fact that they waited for him to discard, uh, uh, it was like a box of a couple pizza slices box. of pizza. And then yeah. he goes off into that building in Manhattan. They just take the pizza, bring it back, and do what they got to do. They're like, yep, this is the guy. It's almost like, no, remember when celebrities used to complain about the paparazzi would like steal their garbage? They would yeah. like throw stuff out and they're like, oh, but it's out in the curb. It's public domain. So they would go through uh, through and see like their their bank transactions and medical bills and other shit that wasn't supposed to be public because they just threw it out. That's yeah. what this is now. But you have the legal backing of the government to to do so. You can't do anything anymore. Not saying you should, but it's just no. amazing that we're at that point now. It's like you couldn't even attempt it in most of the times now. But, but the here's thing the thing, though. Like, we're not even at that point yet because there are numerous, like, stories of, like this guy robbed this place or this guy went into this business and did this. And it's the grainiest black and white footage. And they're like, have you seen this person? And no, I haven't because I can't tell what this person looks like. Mm. They still okay. can't get cameras perfect. I don't know what it is because I have – you know, cameras in my house that I, I can see perfectly. I don't know why they don't carry these things in stores. They're not expensive. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why we're still it's stuck on that the, technology. The stores probably use the old security shit where it's like time-lapse video where it's like recording right. it weird, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's probably just keeps overwriting it and that's why it gets all grainy. I mean, like, three days ago, a bodega, maybe like 15 blocks from me, like, two people were stabbed and another person was killed and the dude just ran out the door. Like, they still haven't caught him. So it's like you can get away with shit. <laughs> um, our pal uh, Gio from Colorado uh, in there saying lots of videos of people robbing stores and no one intervenes anymore. They're just like, well, why would I get involved? There's no point to. Like you're, yeah. not, you're not getting paid enough at CVS to give a shit that someone well, stole, is stealing a bunch of deodorant. I don't give a well, fuck. And for the most not, part, it's not worth it. It, for the most part, when you work in retail or anything like that, you're told not to. You can actually get in trouble for trying yeah, to intervene. 
because like when I was working at Blockbuster Video, someone came in and tried to rob and buy, you know, take a bunch of movies and he took off with like a bunch of stuff. I chased after him and got the stuff back and then I got written up because, you know, I shouldn't have done it. You should have thrown yourself at the front door to prevent him from leaving with six (laughs) empty boxes of raisinets because he doesn't realize you have to bring them to the counter to get everything. Uh, This is how long ago it was. I actually stopped him from stealing Dreamcast games. Wow. (laughs) Right? That's how long ago. Because no one could stop anyone from stealing Dreamcast games. All you had to do was download it and print it on a CDR. Right, exactly. Um, My mom told me a story many years ago that she was... I think in Publix or something, and she saw some kids, young teenage kids, maybe 12, somewhere around there, um, saw the the big um, end cap display of gift cards, and they took some, and she thought they were like one of the video game cards, like for Xbox or, or PlayStation or something, but they yeah. ran and grabbed a couple and then kind of ran off thinking that they got cards Stuff that lasted. they can use for you know, purchasing games and, and things like that. But she laughed about it. Like she saw it. She told somebody, but she like, what can they do? They took empty cards. Yeah. You have to bring it to scan it to get it activated. Yeah. You got to take the boxes to up to the front when they used to have the cages. Oh, Toys R Us days where you bring the ticket up or the boxes up and they'd give you all that stuff. It's amazing. People have had dumb that they're like, oh, it's out there in the open. I'm just going to take it. Well, right. No, that's not all there. And if it is, yeah, it's be- that's not how that works. but look, that doesn't stop people too because we've seen footage over the uh, the last couple of years where people were going into like an Apple store and then just trying to remove the the industrial magnet that's holding the <laughs> right, the and yeah. the chain that's holding that the iPads and the phones down. They're just standing up there and like what they're just trying to rip them off the desks. It, nothing. There's no boundaries for a lot of this shit anymore. Um, so anyway, so. As it stands right now, and it's interest, always interesting because when they do public opinion, and I don't know why they do this. I hate when the news does this because they always need some kind of man on the street comment to throw into a news story. Like if they're down somewhere in a tornado hit or a flooding or you know some, there was a shooting over here. If it's an official, if it's a family member or something that's tied to the to the incident that happens, I get it. But when you just got to flag somebody down on the street and it's like, hey, what do you think of this happened? Oh, man, I, you know, I think it's crazy. You can, you're just not safe around here anymore. And that's yeah. the drop. And you're like, why is this in the fucking news story? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. And they do that with with the uh, the Gilgo Beach thing where the news people are all saying because he he's being charged, but he hasn't been convicted. So everything is alleged. They have to say alleged. Uh, but they, have to say alleged. they talk to the people on the street or they talk to they show posts online. Everyone's saying, well, th- this asshole did it. He's guilty. He's whatever. It's like you can't legally. I mean, you, you legally have to be responsible as the press to say alleged, even yeah. though they're they're going through the motions. It's a due process. And then post public comments that are just saying the guy did it. He did. It. It's like you. you how do you get away with both of that? And then you put assholes on the street. Who's like, yeah, no, I I lived around the, the block from him. And yeah, he always seemed to kind of shift. You know, and then, you know, the neighbor's going this, that asshole's never talked to him once. You just went out there because the news crew was there and you wanted to get on television. Right. Well, that, well, that actually happened to my sister. So uh, we had a neighbor like three doors. She's allegedly us. been caught for murder. Uh, yes. <laughs> allegedly right. been caught for murder. No, but we had, I had a neighbor like three doors up from us who uh, blew himself up with a pipe bomb. And uh, he survived, but he blew like everything in his crotch off because he was building it in his lap and it exploded. He was going to mail it. He was going to mail it. He was going to mail it to his pregnant girlfriend and uh, it blew up in his lap while he was making it. And so the news was there. My sister goes on the news. She's like, that guy's a psychopath. We all knew he's crazy. Of course he was going to do it. This guy's a lunatic. And my dad was so upset. <laughs> you didn't, like, they you didn't know him. Like, yeah. Yeah. But well, no, but we did know him. The guy was a fucking lunatic. Like he would come out with his like gun and like shoot into like the parkway sometimes. Like he was like a legit lunatic. There, like, we knew he was crazy. There was a, so, like, there was wasn't shocking. There was a, I, I, I think I have the news story somewhere. I, I think it's on a VHS tape. I think I got to digitize it. Um, there was one time where my house and a whole bunch of houses in the area where I used to live on Long Island, a uh, nice area, a bunch of houses all next to each other got their big bay windows and stuff smashed by rocks. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
so the next day you know the police are all over investigating in suffolk county and uh and the uh, cops are hanging out in the area just to see if people they think it was just you know kids doing it or teenagers or something that it wasn't like a, a smash and grab kind of situation where the people are trying to break in so they were hanging around in unmarked cars just to see if anybody came by around the house to, that maybe did it, but they came back the next day to see what was going on. But then the news comes out, and Long Island has a couple local news things, but it's New York City news, you know, NBC, ABC, CBS. So when they're on Long Island, it's just like if it was happening in the city. Yeah. So one of the, maybe it was CBS, one of the news crews was out there, and um, they were in front of a bunch of the houses, and, and like the house right next to mine. And they're talking to somebody about all of this. And I'm like, I, I couldn't, f- I was like, who the fuck are they talking to? I see the news report, and it's this fat asshole that was like two grades above us, uh, or at least above me at the time. He doesn't even live there. Like, he lives way down on the other end, of, and yeah, these yeah. streets are like three miles long. He lived all the way in there, and he drove over, pulled over. The news asked if they wanted he wanted to comment, and he's talking about, like, I can't believe this kind of stuff happened in this neighborhood. And it's like, yeah, I know these people. I know him. He's a, He was a degenerate loser, and... I've never hung out with the guy. He's got severe mental issues, and like, and he showed up to talk on the news. So, oh look, I'm on TV for it's like I I want to just blame him. I really wanted to go out and say, yeah, that that guy you just talked to in the news. I think he's involved with it. But it turned out it was a bunch of kids from Brentwood, and the one kid was the son of a famous boxer. Oh jeez. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, remember uh, what the fu- uh, McGirt, Buddy McGirt. Big Everybody famous does. boxer from what, long the 1800s? from long hundreds. Like what kind of name is that? Did no. he fight on pirate ships? <laughs> like the bare knuckles. Mr. Oh, Cuffs. I'm Buddy McGirt. Dude, he's a big black dude. He was gonna he'd kick okay. the shit out of all of us. Is he gonna beat me up? I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yes. <I'm sorry>. McGirt, <laughs> McGirt. So um, uh, McGirt. So it was his kid. And the footage that you saw when they were arrested, they were like these kids were walking out in handcuffs uh, to this uh, booking area, and um, like. I guess the other kids that were with him, one was going to college, which tells a lot about the area of Brentwood that one was going to college out of the, yeah, <laughs> the group. Yeah. And uh, can only afford one. Yeah. It's well, crazy. he wasn't going to college anymore because that got taken away because it was all over the news that these these uh, people drove over to these areas and were just smashing windows and uh, at nice houses and stuff. Fucking Buddy McGirt. But I'll see if I can find... I, for, I forgot all about that till just now. I'll, I'll see if I can digitize the tape and bring it in so we can see. And then you can see the fat asshole. I'll have to blur his name, but you can see who it is. You may know his sister, Gittles. Me? Yeah. I'm What's gonna... Uh, name? I think yeah, she, type in she, the chat. I think she was cracked out, too. Uh, I guess, it, says they, uh, it says that they think so sorry I was reading about the serial killer here it says that they think that he killed the people in his house they're trying yeah they're trying to find out whether or not at least some of them were killed in the house and that's why they were really going through everything right. I guess uh, Billy Baldwin went to high school with this guy and was like a classmate of his Yeah, he commented like on Twitter or something like that and he goes yeah that's kind of weird I went to high school it was kind of just like an average dude <laughs> Yeah, like, a lot of like, weird I, shit came out of Massapequa. Like this, it, it's it's interesting that Joey Buttafuoco is not the biggest piece of shit to come out of Massapequa not now. Anymore. <laughs> not anymore. But then I was reminded that Stuttering John is also from Massapequa, <laughs> oh, so geez. it it goes. Uh, what's his name? Rex Harrison. Rex, whatever his Rex name is. Humerman or something. Humerman. Like Stuttering John. Joey Buttafuoco. That's the top three that you got to worry about. The thing that's weird is like I've probably been to this guy's house because I worked for the Department of Agriculture and I used to go on to every house in Massapequa, Massapequa Park and Amityville inspecting trees for the Asian longhorn beetle. So I know like all those side streets. I know all of them. So there's a good possibility I've been to this guy's house in the early 2000s and just didn't know it. <laughs> One of these days I need to just sit down with you, Gittles, and find out a little bit more about your weird past because that's such a random thing to have done in your life. And the You're office just going around study. looking for Asian longhorn beetles. Yeah, it was a big thing. Eric can tell you, my dad was part of the whole project. He it's was just, like, it's just he such had a crazy badge and everything. I had a badge. I walked to the woods <laughs> with a machete and like waders, and I had to like get the trees and measure them. And he like, was like, legally you know, like, allowed to Columbo. destroy wildlife. And you know what the best part is? The office that I worked in was in Amityville, and it was half a block from the Amityville Horror House. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 
It didn't look like it though. They remodeled it, so you couldn't tell. That's so funny. Gittles, did you get an award or a medal? I did. I actually have it around here. It's in a box, but yeah, I have like a, a beetle like in glass because I found like all these infested trees. Sure, it's not a prop from like Jurassic Park. I've, it's it's no, encased in the amber. amber. Yeah, it's got the dinosaur <laughs> DNA. Yeah. All right. Where well, did we put that thing? We accidentally gave it to some Jewish kid. <laughs> <laughs> and now the fate of humanity is in chaos. Yeah. He turned into a supervillain. We spared um, no expense. So, yeah. So that's what's uh, going on. Um, that's so crazy. Wait, what oh, was this part? Killers. News, of, uh, news of a suspect being taken into custody comes days after state police responded to a report of skeletal remains found in the wooded area off the Southern State Parkway in the Islip area, which was really right next to us. Uh, yeah, that's where I lived. Police... They found uh, the, oh, shit. <laughs> Gittles just turns off his camera and goes away. We he never just hear goes away. Uh, police planned on a briefing in the site near uh, this Friday afternoon. It wasn't immediately clear if those remains are linked to the Gilgo Beach case. Oh, okay. oh, I think that was a different. That was a different thing. That was I saw. I saw an article about that. It was somebody else who was missing. All right, it's at the bottom of uh, the NBC piece here. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Glad we moved out because everybody on Long Island is is crazy, insane. and now they're all, all serial insane. killers. So I wonder if he's gonna have one of those really cool like video footage of him in the like the uh the interrogation room because i used to love watching those videos oh i love those videos they're on youtube you watch the interrogation room uh-huh. videos where there's the guy like telling you how the interrogator is like tricking them into like giving out information it's really yeah it's really exactly interesting videos yeah like i just did yeah to the bash with a big <laughs> <of course. laughs> yes it did you had to get oh. it sewed onto your sash <laughs> He sold the most cookies Scouts. that year for the uh, for the Department magazine of Agriculture. Subs- yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah magazine subscriptions, cookies, and getting rid of Asian horn beetles. Got it. Long horn beetles. Yeah. Long horn beetles. Excuse me. Yeah, they. Were, I wouldn't want to offend any beetles out there. I can't get this stupid song out of my head. I've been trying for days, <laughs> and I can't Your get song, it out of my head. Just Party in the you. USA by Miley Cyrus. No, That's I mean, it. oh, that is a what they call a banger. Uh, that is not the one that I'm thinking of. It. Uh, that song has been stuck in my head because my boss played it like 15 times last week. So it's play the Weird Al version and, and try to erase it so that the two cancel each so other out. a Weird Al version? Yeah. Awesome. Called Party in the CIA. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Look for that one. And it's not like one of those mislabeled Napster things where apparently Weird Al did The Devil Went Down to Jamaica or Adam Sandler did The Devil Went Down to Jamaica. It was always the two. Did yeah. every song that was out there and they were all bad morning show parody songs. Uh, no, this song here. Who is this? Lemon. I like that song. It is. It's literally, literally, he he showed me this the other day, and it has been in my head. We're big Jaws nonstop. fans. We're uh, Jordan might be bigger. I, Jordan is a bigger Jaws fan than I am, but I am a Jaws fan. A lot of people of our age um, and even older were big Jaws fans, and just by you know every now and then my algorithm and stuff shows me weird shit. And the same with Spotify. If I listen to something, it's like, hey, you listen to this, you might like this stuff, and uh, it's by this group called uh, Lemon Demon. And the reason why I think Lemon Demon has come up on my playlist a couple times because they did this song that blew up in the time of Fark and Ebaum's world and all that. It was called uh, the ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. And it was all about all these um, comic book heroes, toy figures, movie uh, characters, all stuff all getting together. And they're doing a death match to fight to see who's going to be the last one standing. I was listening to this guy the other day. Yeah. So. It suggests, and I see Jaws, and I go, what is, and I didn't see who the band was yet. It just said, do you want to listen to Jaws? Yes, I want to listen and see what yes, Jaws is. And I'm thinking it's that shit thing from the 70s where that guy does the news report. Mr. Jaws, what are you doing here? And they play terrible song clips as, as his answer. Uh, it's not. It's uh, this group, Lemon Demon. It's almost if, if the Talking Heads did a song about Jaws, that would be this. And... I was hoping they had a music video for it, and they don't. Not at least not an official one. 
but somebody did this kind of patchwork animation and Jordan and I were watching it last night and laughing, we laughing so hard about how <laughs> ridiculous it is. So uh, Jaws the singing shark. Maybe well, because we'll, the song itself kind of describes the movie, but right. then in certain parts kind of goes off the rails in a weird way. Right. And they animate it and it's just just stupid funny. So maybe to kind of uh, clean, cleanse the palate as we go into is we got to talk about the lack of anything going on at San Diego Comic-Con right. this year. Uh, might as well bring this up and uh, just enjoy the animated works for the song Jaws. We're going to listen to the whole thing, too. Jaws the shark, lurking in the dark of the depths of the sea. One day on a lark, decides to get rowdy, get real violent. Takes a vacay up to Amity Island. Sunshine, lotion, fun in the sun, blood in the ocean. Everybody run, because it's crazy how few fucks this shark gives. He'll eat naked ladies, he'll eat little kids. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that stupid kid, there, boy. This is like me driving on the beach in GTA 5. But the one thing GTA Shark is safe is a guy named Cody and his pal Richard Dreyfus. Jaws don't know that a storm's gonna come. He just wants everyone to be his chum. Get it? Get it? Get it? The mayor don't care if the townsfolk die. He doesn't want to spoil the 4th of July. He's like, everyone cool it and go for a swim. But holy shit, here comes that fin singing Jaws is here. <laughs> here is Jaws. This will be stuck in your head for days. Yeah. Everyone saw. Long story short, the beach gets closed. The mayor's like, okay, yeah, this blows. Suddenly, Jaws has got a price on his head, but the wrong little shark baby ends up dead. It was Jaws' little brother. Now he's pissed. The mayor just shot to the top of his list. He sneaks in his house in the middle of the night of and this. he eats that fucker in a single bite. Dolly. <laughs> the shark walking See, into a house. <laughs> I like the animated version better because they put legs on the shark. Yeah. And he's walking. Walking in on legs to go eat the mare. He knows the real killer is still at large. So he and the Dreyfus make a decision. The Dreyfus. They're going on a mission. They're gonna go fishing for Jaws. A man named Quint lets him use his boat on the condition that he'd be the one to cut Jaws' throat. Cause he was a sailor back in World War II. And Jaws ate his entire crew. Whoa, Jaws is here. I like uh, old school Jaws with the the monocle and the in the pork pie hat. Right. And the mustache. On the sea, they wait all night. Where could Jaws be? He's nowhere in sight. Dreyfus decides to go down in a cage, and Jaws shows up in a full on rage. He tears up the cage like paper in a shredder while Dreyfus makes his wetsuit wetter. He hides behind a rock like a cowardly prick, and he doesn't come back until the end of the flick. Grody's like, We're gonna need a bigger <laughs> right. boat. So they go back home and get a bigger boat. The biggest boat that's ever sailed. Gonna kick Jaws' ass, or I guess his tail. Yeah, his tail. But oh my shit, Jaws jumps out and Quinn gets bit. Right in half like a Kit Kat bar Up in the sky there's a shooting star That's Quint up in heaven He's a star now Brody's angry He's all like fuck it He takes a harpoon and welds it to a rocket Jaws' last words are Whoa, respect Then he explodes and it's a pretty good effect Yeah, Jaws is dead <laughs> Along with Jaws This song's amazing <laughs> He was in a movie, you should watch it It's, it's called, called Jaws Jaws is dead yeah, Jaws. Along with Jaws E.T. Jaws. <laughs> Whoa. Sharks exist in real life. This is a long song. It's awesome. Yeah. Get stuck in your head. Well, because it's so long. Have fun with it, Gittles. Jaws I even like I, I even when I came into the room earlier to to start up, Eric hadn't you know got me in yet. And when he got me in, I was like, Jordan's here because it's been stuck in my head all day. Like, here seriously? is Jordan. Here is me. Yeah. You're gonna hear this for days. 
No, I'm not, because I'm going to go into work and I'm going to listen to nothing but Taylor Swift that my co-workers like to listen to, and then I'll have that stuck in my head instead. I'm going to tell your boss, like, hey, you know what song girls really love? On Lemon Demon. Yeah. Please, uh, I'd rather much rather listen to that all day than Taylor Swift. Rusty <laughs> Rot uh, is in the uh, the chat here. Anyway, Lemon Demon is just one dude most of the time. Yeah, I know. I tried reaching out to Neil, who's the head of uh, Lemon Demon, a while ago for the ultimate... Uh, showdown stuff and uh, I just reached out to him again saying we discovered the Jaws song and we're obsessed with the Jaws song and I'd love to have him on at some point so hopefully if I hear back from him <clears throat> we'd love to have him on and uh, talk awesome. about Lemon Demon and all his uh, weird <laughs> trendy stuff you know what he, he kind of has that way of performing and thinking like Dan Deacon Except he's not completely batshit off as crazy. He remembers that he's supposed to make music that sounds good and have fun. So if, if Dan remembered that to make music and have fun with what he did, that's kind of what Lemon Demon is here with. It just it. felt like non ska Aquabats. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. It's yeah, just catchy. It, yeah. And I love Jaws. So like just to have a song like that about that movie is actually really when funny. when I found that song, it was like six something in the morning and I immediately just sent it to Jordan. I'm like let me know when you hear this song. And then that's where we've been ever since down this, uh, down this wormhole here. Uh, I had a link sent to me. Who sent it? To, oh, Gittle sent it to me. You want to watch this one here? If you've never seen it. Yeah. No, I've never seen it. All right. So going with the Jaws theme, this is what if Jaws was a Disney movie? So here it is. Ooh. Are you going to close the beaches? Yes, we are. When the town he loved could hardly sustain itself. <laughs> Insufficient funds. And he was struggling to make ends meet. The bank's foreclosing on the beach. Martin Brody needed a miracle. Oh my god. And he found one. Like In the really form of a curious it. shark with a curious talent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it took me back. Larry, surprise. you won't believe it. <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> a town and a man in ruin find hope in a shark. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. The beaches are open, and people are having a wonderful time. But when those with ulterior motives seek the miraculous creature for themselves, he's a smart fish. <laughs> Brody must defend the shark, his town and his own livelihood. Look, we depend on the summer people here for our very lives. You are not going and to have a summer unless you're here. The exact oh, shark, there's no other sharks like this in these waters. It's a hundred to one. Disney proudly presents a heartwarming tale of a man, a shark, and their song. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. That's great. So good. I like it. I, I would love it if they have another parody where they put the shark in Free Willy and the shark's jumping over the kid and then <laughs> that was the like kid. the time when they were taking trailers and making them different. Like there was the Mrs. Doubtfire one, but he was like he was a serial. He was killer. like a murderer. Yeah, 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 yeah he was like yeah, a serial yeah. killer. Yeah. Do you that remember they used one. to do? Uh, I forgot which channel did it, but they would do like the five second movie trailers, and it would just show it would say Titanic in five seconds or whatever, and it would just go. <laughs> Oh, that yeah, it was like the that. end, and that was the whole movie. And you hear the the Celine Dion song would cue in. I think it was like five second film school or something like that. It was called. It was, yeah, uh, yeah. It was like those quick videos. It definitely sounds <laughs> no, like something no, no. that would be like. like I'm right gonna between, pull that drop too. Between properties on like Adult Swim or something. Right. Oh, good funny. stuff. Good stuff. Thank you for uh, for sharing all that. For some reason, my my. Uh, Mouse is not wanting to. There it goes. That's weird. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? Moving on. So uh, San Diego Comic Con. So it is currently going on uh, as we do the show this weekend. It ends on Sunday. And I don't know how it's going. To, like we've been talking for a while about how E3 was eventually going to go down because companies were pulling out of their stuff. And then it did this year. They canceled. Right the entire event because there was just no points. Microsoft wasn't going to be there. Sony wasn't going to be there. Nintendo does its own thing. So 
what do you got random pc developers that were going to come in and here's our new game no one's going to give a shit about that yeah look at sierra They're right back. <laughs> so um this happens e3 goes away and we've been saying for a while that san diego is probably going to be the next thing because mostly because of disney when disney got the marvel and the, and the star wars properties they inherited celebration which is a massive international convention and it's only just star wars like it's big right. enough to attract the world for just star wars and it's like every other year it's in the united states the the following year it's in somewhere else around the globe and then the next year it's back in the u.s yeah last year it was in uh, england this year it'll be in the u.s and then next year i think it's japan right I've already announced who they're gonna where they're gonna put them all major cities and all places that people will go and travel to if for their love of Star Wars. But then Disney's D23 over the last several years has really grown into a, a, a juggernaut for a convention. And that's anything Disney wants to do is their own convention. So all their properties are represented there. You don't need San Diego to... I mean, the days of the Hall H reveal of something for the Marvel Universe... Do, aren't necessary anymore or or Pixar or, or any kind of Disney property you don't need to be there you don't need any um, Star Wars stuff you don't there. need to promote it yeah you just don't need to you promote do but anymore. just do it on your own property you don't need right. to go and, and do it there anymore now San Diego's happening and then the actor strike hit last week so for a lot of that because it affects uh, the television division, it affects the theatrical division, which means movies. I'm to go to a Broadway show Monday. I wonder if it's happening. You better check because I think I think they 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 held the past the the midnight deadline to like an emergency session or something. But it Broadway looked like it averted. Okay, it did get averted. Yeah. Oh, so Broadway's not going on strike. Yeah, it says Broadway strike averted after deal reached by union and producers. This was a couple hours ago. So, yeah. Okay. So, all right. That's fairly new. So, um, yeah, it, it looked like Broadway was going to shut down, too. And that would be devastating for, for New York, for Broadway. And it also cancels, I think it was like 16 or 17 national tours of stuff, too. So, the rest of the country gets affected by that as well. So, anyway, the, the Screen Actors Guild... Uh, AFTRA, which is combined with that, <clears throat> they go on strike. It's for TV, it's for theatrical, and uh, online you can see it everywhere. They give you the list of um, what people in the unions can and can't do, things they can work on, and a lot of things they can't do. One of the things they can't do is promote properties. They can't Anything, go out yeah. to do, promote movies. They can't. We saw the the clips on the news. If you haven't seen it, go look it up. Where the Oppenheimer cast was at, what was it Cannes? They were over the Cannes. They were, film festival? No, they were in uh, the festival. UK premiere. Oh, the, yeah, UK, they were in the premiere. UK premiere. And during the premiere, like the movie hadn't even started. During the premiere, they got up and they all left. And yeah, then strike and came official, and they were like, "All right, well, they all out. got up and left." Well, I mean, like to be fair, I think they've seen it. Fair. <laughs> I don't know the ending. I'll never see the ending. The uh, they all die at the end. The uh, they all get up and they leave. So a reporter or one of the news outlets uh, gets a hold of Christopher Nolan and said, "So what's going on here?" Because the press didn't know, the people didn't know um, exactly what was happening. And uh, Christopher Nolan says, "Well, uh, all the actors and everybody are going home now to write their uh, their picket signs." It was something like that. It was just something very abbreviated, and then he left too. So the Oppenheimer premiere fell apart. They did nothing in the United States for it. The big Barbie thing was happening, I think, in L.A., right? Because they built that house, yeah, yeah. too, in Malibu. To, to like, They went all out for the fucking Barbie movie. They did. And it was writing a, a lot of uh, praise and press because it was tied to the Oppenheimer release. Like For some reason, those two were just constantly promoting the other and, and, and it just was working online at least they had to cancel everything they had the pink carpet was going to be laid out in LA they had uh, like she was going to have her uh, Corvette they were going to have all this stuff going on and uh, the staff uh, the, the cast couldn't go there the production people couldn't go there and it just wound up being um, a big waste of money because of the uh, the union strike Disney Luckily for Disney, they figured out because they had a premiere for the Haunted Mansion. I was wondering if you saw right? that. Yeah. So 
all the cast members. I'm trying to remember most of the cast. I know Danny DeVito's in the movie, but I'm trying to remember some of the other cast members. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Danny DeVito, um, Rosario Dawson. Rosario in Dawson, this. yeah. Um, so there's a lot of big know. stars that were going to be there for that red carpet or oh, purple Wilson. or green carpet, whatever they were doing for the Haunted Mansion. So strikes happening. They can't do that. Disney, smart enough, sends their caricatures out Mm-hmm. dressed in um, either um, like fancy suits or as characters for the, the haunted mansion. So the the red carpet, blue carpet, purple carpet, whatever it was, the big press line was just people in all the Disney suits dressed for the movie. <laughs> so they got their promotion and their new stuff out of it by not having you know the actors there. They're like, well, we got the characters, dress them up and send them out, and, and that's what they did. Um San Diego's going on. There's been real, really no news about if anything is not happening or happening with the big day, which is Saturday, and that's the Hall H stuff. That was always the day for the big movie reveals or the big television things uh, that were going on in Hollywood was on happened on Saturday, and yeah. there's nothing. Like we we were looking online before the show too. It's like. There's no news that that it's not happening, but there's no news that it is happening. It's yeah, just kind the of big news that I knew about was prior to this that they said Marvel is definitely not going to do any Hall H stuff this year, and this was pre-strike, right? And then um, I, I don't know if even DC had anything really planned, and it comes down to you're right. Disney has their D23, they have their their you know the celebration stuff. And then what we saw during the pandemic is that DC started to do that sort of thing too. They had their little Reveals and their little in-house convention stuff, where they were announcing what's coming up for everything, and I they may go that route now too, especially with James Gunn heading everything up and just kind of laying everything out. Right, they may not do these big. They can do all the stuff. There's almost no reason for it. Warner Brothers, massive company, but they're not built. They don't have the infrastructure like Disney does. Where if Disney didn't have the uh, celebration or if they didn't have D23 going they could just do the stuff at their parks like right. they had they could do it in any of their properties and it would still get the the same amount of attention and press and social media interaction and stuff Warner Brothers has big properties but they don't have the loc- the the foundation or the the locations to just do stuff like they would have to do pop-up things for it to be to make a big buzz over this stuff and maybe they figure some stuff out when like you said when James Gunn takes over but when Disney years ago didn't need to be at San Diego anymore we all saw the writing on the wall like this is it's going to be done we don't they they, they don't need to be there and then like you just said Marvel was not going to have a presence there which was the Mm -hmm. biggest thing in the last 10 years for San Diego was always what is Marvel going to do at San Diego Comic Con they had no present, and but this was before the strike, so that was very mm-hmm. telling. It's like this is going to be bad for San Diego. Now the strike's happening, and they can't. I don't know what they can do. Like there, um, there was uh, what was they there today? Like just pay people and end the strike. Yeah, they could do that, but even. <laughs> But that would be taking the easy way out. Of no, but good it, the, but plans have all been scrapped and stuff. Like you couldn't, if the strike ended tomorrow, they couldn't get everybody out there to to do everything. Everybody is yeah. either picketing or they're on vacation or or whatever they're doing. They're not in Hollywood. So, um, there's a couple of things going on. I know WWE, which is not a union thing, so they're out there doing their tie-ins with Mattel because the, the to- Mattel does their toy line. They're doing their panels. They're doing all that stuff. I saw Heather say, uh, I, I'm not a fan of the property, but I know it's, it's very uh, beloved. The Critical Role has a, a, a big presence out there, which is, um, what do you call it? It's like D&D, right? It's, yeah, it's it is D&D, D&D but it's a, like, as a show or podcast. But it, it's like the biggest thing right now in that yeah. world. So, you know, that makes sense that it's there and they're, and they're doing stuff. I don't know what else is going on. Um, Gio said that San Diego Comic Con is sold out for 2023, and that's fine. But that just means the floor. Like that doesn't mean the passes for um, all the other stuff. Which leads me to this: people are going to go out to the floor and shop with the vendors, and then see other artists and and things like that. And that's great. Go and support all those people. But there's a big portion of the floor that is autographs, meet and greets. Oh yeah. And they're expensive. Like some of them, like the cheaper end is like $50. 
the more expensive end. If the, I remember one year they had Patrick Stewart there. You can get your photo and uh, I bet you, that was expensive. I don't think he was doing autographs, but you could get the photo. The photo was over three hundred something dollars just to go and stand next to him in front of a like a blue black uh, blue uh, background backdrop is what I meant to say. And uh, you just stand there and there real quick. It's like a cattle call. Come in, uh, hey, yeah. how you doing? Picture done, whatever. You just spent three hundred fifty dollars. And you're right. They just get you through. Like you, you, you don't get really to talk to anybody. Like my brother yeah. met um, uh, Stan Lee a few years back at Phoenix Comic Con, and it was like stand next to uh, Stan Lee. Don't touch him. He doesn't talk to you. You just stand behind him. Don't get in, and, and then that's it. And then you get out, and it's seconds, and you're spending two hundred bucks. We uh, we got to meet Stan Lee at the uh, IMDb boat. They had a yacht mm-hmm. that was. Uh, Parked at behind the um, the convention center, and Kevin Smith was doing a lot of interviews and stuff. And he came in with with Kevin, and uh, it was Matt OG and I uh, were out there, and uh, we see Kevin. We're talking with Kevin, and he he says, "Hey, have you met Stan Lee?" I'm like, no, I have not met Stan Lee. Hello, how are oh, you yes, doing? We're, we're close. Yeah, we talk. Yeah, yeah, we talk all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we live near each other in Brooklyn. Um, so, you know, Kevin, you know, I'll always be thankful for Kevin for, for that and, and a bunch of other stuff. But, uh, you know, we got to talk to Stan for a little bit, like have an actual conversation with him, a, like a human being. Right. Matt and I were too afraid to ask for photos. We're like, I don't think this is the place to ask him for a photo, even though they're there at San Diego <laughs> Comic Con promoting there for. there for. And Matt and I later were like, we <laughs> should have asked for photos, but we didn't at that time. But he was very nice, very cool. Anyway, um, the autograph stuff, the meet and greet stuff, very expensive. And people mm-hmm. wait online for hours. Like today, I have four things I have to I, get those done. Those people are wasting their time anyway. This is a good break for them. They need to know that, like, <laughs> don't waste your time on that shit. Well, they're <laughs> spending, like, thousands of dollars to do yeah, all but a lot of that's stuff. going to the artist. Like, I bet you the, ven- the, like, the, the venue at SDCC is probably making more money from the vendors who are setting up all their booths and shit than they're making off of the, like, whatever split from I don't know the, the the talent is paid in advance they get their set money so it's not like they're trying to recoup the money from um, but the then pe- it should be like one set fee for any picture like every artist there has a different price for their no because it's you know different I mean? promoters each yeah. one it's not like this company presents Patrick Stewart this company's presenting you no know, Josh Whedon's cast of yeah, but like how much but what I'm saying is like how much of the venue gets a cut of that versus how much of the venue I think gets you're just renting floor you get you pay rent for like your floor space Gotcha. I think that's what it is. It's like you're just paying for your taped out but I'm square. Sure, but I'm sure like for SDCC, they could just fix that by being like Artist Alley is bigger this year. We have more spaces. Everyone can get in. And they couldn't they didn't have any time to prep for this. That that strike happened the end of the last uh, end of last week. They had no time to make any changes. Everything was all set and ready to go. And, and when Monday comes around, Monday's the big loadout for the con- uh, convention floor and then by Wednesday they've got the next weekend stuff loading in so there's just, there's no time to, to move and do any of that stuff um, so I don't know what the strike allows people to do as far as the meet and greets the paying for the autographs those kind of things with the bigger talent they may not allowed to be there and so all these people are going to have to get their money refunded I don't know uh, like the smaller stuff that are non-union Toy creators, comic book artists, wrestlers, uh, independent creators, all those things aren't affected by this. They're affected by the t- big talent not being there, so maybe less people show up to you know the areas that they're in. I don't know. We'll see how at the end of this weekend how it all fared out. But I was uh, just at a, a there's been no event. buzz. Like nothing. Yeah. There was a, a, that's not entirely true. There was a little bit of a bump online because they showed a new trailer for the new Spider-Man game for PlayStation, and then Tony Todd, who was can- our candy man, um, was, is the voice of Venom, so he did an I Am Venom thing, and that was going around all all over the place, but that was it. And this is the opening day. Like, last well, night was preview night, and now this was the first day, and there's nothing. There's no day, news. Yeah. yeah. The only My thing I've seen is, is, like, some sets from, like, some new TV shows that are coming out. I've seen some stuff from that because... The TV show, other TV shows that I followed, it's being made by same creators. So like I'm seeing stuff on like Reddit's about that, but no mm-hmm. buzz. It's just like no user submitted things of like, hey, check this out. Right. Well, and my experience with some of these conventions is that these the the vendors get a big huge bump when certain people are there because you know, especially like say Funko, 
you know, if you got a famous actor, you know, signing autographs, you know, you're going to move that particular pop. Right. You know, that that is yeah. and you're like, hey, come get this signed. I, you see signs about it all the time. Hey, buy this. Go get it signed. You're going to go see this guy anyway. Yeah. So I, I would assume that that's not going to help their sales. Um, and what you're going to see is I Gio, mean, we mentioned that out of Hall H. So, sorry, Jordan. Gio, we mentioned that but, earlier, too. Yeah. The Funko oh, yeah. exclusives yeah. for San Diego are not impressive this year. Like, I don't Every know. Every year, who there's really always at least one that I kind of want, and yeah. then there's been nothing. There's nothing that anybody cares about with this this year. Sorry, J- Jordan, continue. No, no, and it's just a you know you've got people like um, Legendary pulled out of Hall H, so they're not going to be showing the new Godzilla Dune Part Two is now rumored to be now possibly moving to 2024 because they can't promote it, and you know this is going to be their big you know November release. They 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 need to promote it. They can't. Yeah. Um, you know, Amazon pulled a lot of their events out. Uh, you're not going to get top tier stuff. Amazon goes all out too. Drawn for. People think Amazon that, does like pretty big stuff at Comic Con. Yeah, year. people don't think that Amazon like they'll have a present. But when you think of the big panels, the big trailers and stuff, it's usually Warner Brothers, it's Sony, it's Disney, it's Xbox, it's Nintendo, like that kind of thing. Right. But Gittles and I have seen many years, especially at New York Comic Con, they have giant like they'll have a third of a floor. Yeah, uh, big, big uh, stuff. and they'll have a big exhibit. Like they had that um, that electronic fighting boat when they were promoting the tick. So yeah. you got in there and you got a to go boat. through the boat, and it's it's essentially night boat. Um, <laughs> they had that stuff. They had stuff for uh, the boys when that was starting. They had a big thing there mm-hmm. too. What was hey, that one last year? That Amazon show last year about like the I think it had like Florence Pugh in it or something like that. I can't remember. It was like the people and I got a free fanny pack from going through like the little booth for it. <laughs> there was, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember, remember what that was, but remember they had, uh, they had like a haunted place where you'd go in and you would look at stuff and then stuff would be writing on it on the mirror or be writing in a book. It was some kind of creepy show, some creepy spooky thing. And then they had the expanse, which was a big sci-fi property for yeah. them for a while. They had a big, um, walk-in section where i guess you could you could experience one of the the capsules or something that you could live in uh but yeah amazon used to go all out as well for all of this stuff um funko's not terrible but funko is a big draw like people yeah. were fighting for those lottery entries oh, to yeah, go in dude. there we've told stories too that like we'd walk off the floor after doing interviews and doing our shopping or whatever and there's people standing right there cash in hand offering Gittles like $500 for something he just bought and Gittles happily selling it well no <laughs> right. to be fair to, the correct way was like not as we're walking off the floor go around the corner and then we'll see yeah, exactly. you in a minute yeah and then Gittles went and did that but they would walk right up like you just paid you got your receipt back you turn and they're right there in front of you i'll buy that off you right I now i still have the friday night funko box behind me from last year i gotta sell that while well, it's still like worth like a thousand dollars i still shit. i have your other thing over there i gotta sell yeah, i was gonna say right up here is the uh the sam freddy funko that's the yep. one i sent you right yep yeah that was uh paying a debt we are are we square we're, we're square. square square good trust me very good uh, Tom from Alberta. I got the green, green glow under my car. Well, Tom, I've got the boom boom system. You can hear real far. So just so you know, uh, wow. Malibu uh, Mal- Molly's in there. Invited guests are not allowed to do promotions, panels, signings, fan expos, award shows, junkets, podcast appearances. The strike will end conventions. Yeah, uh, it won't end the commerce, but I don't know if the commerce is enough to keep San Diego uh, afloat for that space. San Diego is gigantic, and I don't know if commerce alone is enough to keep that thing open if you don't have no. any of the extra stuff. So uh, we're, you, I mean, you got to probably move to a smaller space. It's going as it is right now. It has to. Like they're not going to close gonna it be, down. It's just going to be like those smaller city like <laughs> comic cons where it's mostly just vendors <laughs> and no one showing up. Oh, uh, Heather was there for the forbidden sale. She said the pink shiny Batman. Giddle's got accosted for where the guy wanted to uh, give him 500 bucks to buy that right now. Uh, Bartholomew is saying uh, 50 bucks to walk up and stare at Nathan Fillion as he scrolls on Twitter. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, probably. I met Nathan Fillion. I did one of those walk up and get a picture with him, and he just he stands there. He kind of helps you out. You get up next to him. You smell him. He smells great. He's very tall, and then you get the fuck out. Yeah. And then you get a dorky picture with Nathan Fillion. Yeah, and then like, come back in an hour. We'll have the printout for you, or unless you chose right. the email option, which 
I don't know why you don't choose the email option. I saw uh, saw people mm-hmm. who would go back to their thing with their ticket or whatever to get their eight by ten that was printed out, and they would put it in the mylar uh, protector and then put it in their bag and walks out. Why wouldn't you just have the the dig- Maybe you get both. I don't know how that uh, all works, but why wouldn't you get the digital copy and print it out yourself? Why are you going to take their printout and not get the digital copy? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. It could be that. It could not be. Oh, who knows? Who cares? Uh, yeah. So, uh, any other San Diego Comic Con stuff? Uh, look, we're only in day one, day two. You know, hitting tomorrow morning. Maybe we'll see some stuff, but so far there's been nothing really revealed. Nothing that anyone cares about. The media at least cares about. And I almost forgot it. it was happening. To be honest with you, like it took me. Well, we forgot about it last year. Last year was the first year back. Yeah. After the the being gone for two years from the pandemic. And we forgot about, like, almost everybody forgot about it there, too. And they had some things going on for Hall H and and uh, yeah. trailer reveals and, and what have you. But, yeah, a lot of people forgot about it. And then this year, there's been no hype. And the strike only happened the end of last week. So there was nothing leading up as far as a buzz to San Diego. Where I, we started to see, like, this is falling apart fast was when they were talking about that they may go on strike. Adult mm-hmm. Swim posted on social media. Um, Adult Swim gets there. There's a big lawn between the end of the convention center and the Hilton Hotel. And they usually rent that whole entire lawn and they make a carnival and they have attractions and rides and games. And then they do um, almost like a drive through movie thing where you can come and sit down on the ground and they have a big uh, movie and they show you um outtakes of Rick and Morty or one of those animated shows that they do that didn't air and it's just exclusively if you're there you get to watch that kind of stuff so they make Mm -hmm. it special well this year they were doing their own meet and greet out on the lawn there so they had the cast of most of their shows Venture Brothers, Rick and Morty um, I'm forgetting some of their other shows but they had a bunch of of shows there that people would have loved to go and and get their photos and stuff signed or whatever and they said we regret to inform you that uh, the following uh, meet and greets and photo opportunities have all been cancelled and then the strike happened and then this all fell apart so yep is what it is all right uh we need to take a break when we come back we're gonna fly through segment two and look going forward segment two is for segment two yeah i know going forward we may have to rethink (laughs) segment two for a while because there's little to no information coming out as far as anything worth our time and yours so eric and i will be describing plots from various love boat episodes It may get to that, and I will enjoy that. <laughs> I'll even pay our own subscription fee just to sit there and watch us doing it, which is impossible do to do. All right, we're going to take a break. We That's will sad. be right back. More, it's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next. It's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook. At It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Eric Nagel. Segment two of the program. Eric Giddles Jordan here for segment two. Where we talk about television, movies, and streaming updates. All the stuff that you need to know about. We watch it. We take care of it so you don't have to because there's too much of it out there. (laughs) And uh, yeah, we're doing it for Giddles. Giddles is now part of the audience for segment two because he doesn't know any of this stuff. That's where he tunes out. And pretty much we're all going to join the audience because... Who knows how long segment two is going to last under current conditions. So, moving on. Oh, Jordan updated something I didn't see I here. I put some stuff. Yes. You did. All right. Uh, in theaters this weekend, Barbie and Oppenheimer. Why they're yeah. tied together other than they have the same release date. Why That's it. idiots on the internet tried to make this a thing. Why they're it's selling merchandising called Barbenheimer. It's so because dumb. there's two big properties that didn't want to, like, Move that go good together. State chicken. It's not. It's Reese's. Barbie and GI Joe. It works together. They have always yeah, went hand in hand. <laughs> I'm I'm go I'm going Friday for one, Saturday for the other. Giddles is going to try to see it this weekend. So I'm yeah. seeing Barbie on Sunday, and then Oppenheimer. I was going to try and see today, but like all the showings were like six o'clock, 
and it would have three hours long show time and it's, it's a long show it's almost it's almost as long as this show i want to go see oppenheimer i hear you i, I want to go see oppenheimer but i got too much shit to get done uh i gotta I see make a, a program note uh, there is no uh no show next week we're gonna have a, yep. a special that'll be airing in our place um i gotta go run down to florida and and do some stuff but then the, the week after that we'll be back live for uh for the program here so anyway in the theaters this weekend barbie and oppenheimer if you go let us know what you think i want to see oppenheimer i'm look i'm at this point i want to see barbie because i'm curious now because of all the it's actually getting decent reviews like people aren't shitting on this movie like i thought they would be so no because it's like it's made with purpose it's not someone trying to cash in on a barbie movie it's somebody making a satirical barbie movie you know yeah what i mean it's not the it's not mattel being like we need a barbie movie it was greta garraway saying i'm gonna make a barbie movie you know there's right. a difference <laughs> well i want to go I'm, I'm curious i want to go see it I, i've gotten to the point where i just don't give a shit about critics reviews anymore because I've been so let down. I've been let down by more, not that I should really be caring, but some of the critic reviews of, of people that I was like, all right, I can kind of gauge it off this this person. They've been had a good track record. Now it's right. just like, it doesn't fucking matter anymore. Critic stuff, it, it just doesn't mean anything anymore. And the audience score rarely reflects the critic score. It's audio score is all troll scores. I yeah. swear. There's like three people who take who like take it seriously. Like I care about the scores and other people like ten or one. <laughs> right. I don't even rate when all my apps keep saying, Do you enjoy this app? Would you rate it five stars? I keep trying to find the no, X to cancel no. out. I am not giving you any kind of review. I don't care. You don't need my feedback. I paid for the also, thing. That's all you're getting. I'm not going to pray. Do not praise the machine. That's where it, I'm going to have to pull that drop to. That's going to be. That is a reminder, though. Please go to iTunes and rate us five stars. <laughs> yeah, praise the machine. Please do praise that. Yes. Machine. Go pr- in that case. Do pr- praise the machine. Yes, please. Do. Apple and Spotify. If you listen to our show on there, uh, please go and uh, rate us positively. We do appreciate that. It does help us out. All right. Moving on. What did you put here about AMC theaters? Uh, AMC hey. theaters drops controversial <laughs> plan to charge more money based on the seat locations. Yeah, finally. Ah, ah, just ah, you. Only Eric was affected. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't. No, I did. I bought a movie you did. ticket you for the advanced price. You went to a movie price. that they had the price. What did I go see? Oh, Indiana uh, Jones. Was it Indiana Jones? It was Indiana Jones. Jones. Okay. Yeah. So basically, they ran this they were going to run this thing where based off seat location, so if you wanted middle seats, you know, up above the, the main thoroughfare area and right dead center they were going to charge more for the seat up front was a little bit less you know depending on where your seat was the price would change they were rolling it out and doing test markets and eric just happened to be in the test market so he ended up having to deal with this I had to pay two dollars extra for the seat that i owe it's always the same seat or the roughly next to the same seat that I get every time I go because I only go here's the movie right. snob coming out I only go fuck IMAX fi- fuck the IMAX <laughs> with lasers or what, what that new format is I don't care about any of that stuff because the seating's not good I go to the Dolby Sound Cinema the where laser, the seat shows the seat the projector is perfectly fine it looks great the seats are wired you're hearing sounds behind you spinning around every direction um it's a fantastic experience so i only go to see that no 3d 3d is not good anymore don't bother if they even still i can't believe they still do 3d to be honest with you every time i see a 3d release i'm like are they still trying to push this yeah is everyone with their 3d tvs now right (laughs) right See uh, what Turkish John said there. The, the blacks are blackers. Now, see if that was any other That's context, racist. we'd be off YouTube and all the <laughs> other platforms right now. But in that case, yes, that is in the AMC uh, thing where they're showing you like, oh, watch the water go from the left to the right with the sound. See the fire. The blacks are blacker. And then it does the whole thing where it's like, what's going on? It goes, yes, the projector is on. Yeah, no shit. We know. Stop being so overdramatic and full of yourself. So uh, speaking of the blacks are blacker real quick. No, 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 no was really funny oh okay like that was a funny movie like it was good which movie the blackening that horror movie with the whole cast was black so you can't really kill off the first black guy yeah i haven't seen that i do want to see that i forgot that movie was coming out so i want to see that on digital now so that's great that amc dropped that we don't have to deal with that nonsense anymore uh what, what do we have here uh 
Oh, this is your notes. Uh, original yeah. 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming to Nickelodeon. All 193 episodes of the original Ninja Turtles series, which ran from 1987 to 1996, are set to debut digitally on Nickelodeon-owned and operated channels such as YouTube, Pluto, and owned and operated linear channels later this month in the United States. Nickelodeon is owned by Viacom, which owns Paramount. So is it going on the Paramount streaming too or no? It might. Yeah, they just announced it today at Comic-Con. I caught it late, so I threw it in there because uh, I actually really liked the old cartoon. I did so, too. And, I and loved it threw it. me off that it ran this long. I, I didn't realize. I want to see how it finally ended because at one point I watched on Saturday morning and mm. they're in Dimension X, like the Technodrome was freed. And I'm like, what, what what's going on here? Right. I don't know how any of this came together. So uh, finally, I'll get to see yep. the ending. 193 episodes. So that's what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rewatching Ninja Turtles. Fantastic. Uh, also, next. Uh, no, out now. Out now. If you're a fan of the Venture Brothers, we've been singing that the praises of that show forever the brand new venture brothers movie is available uh for uh renting and streaming i don't know if it's it might it must be available for digital purchase i don't know if physical copies are out yet uh the venture brothers radiant is the blood of the baboon heart is the name of the movie (laughs) it's like an hour and a half hour and 40 or something uh, not a bad time. In fact, that's one of the rare properties I would like to it be. You know, I'd like to have it longer and sit there and watch it because right. just everything about that franchise is is fantastic. It, the writing, the, the voice work, everything's great. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, announced today, September 29th, Saw X, Saw 10 will be coming out into theaters and it features uh, the guy from the first movie. Is that Open the one mouth. where like Vin Diesel is driving and he has to solve traps or his car explodes? No, this is the one where he has to kill <laughs> all his family. The franchises. Yeah. Fast X meets Saw X. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Uh, so this is set to be between the first and the second. They're pulling that fucking yes. Halloween nonsense. They do that shit all the time. Because there's it's the only way because he died in like part four. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's been dead. Like I don't. You can't make a movie that takes place after everything and make it make sense. So right. what they're doing is. The, the short premise is that he is going to Mexico to try to find a doctor that can cure his cancer, and it takes place between Saw 1 and Saw 2. Okay. I just don't know what you do I don't think that. I've ever seen any of the Saw movies. I, I think I own them all except for the one that um, Chris Rock put out. I know the, I heard that one. I know bad. of Jigsaw. I know he's that's really the face of the franchise for a lot of this stuff but uh, yeah I don't think I've ever seen any of the Saw movies I'll have to go the get... first one is really the good first, like, like, it is four or five I will say are actually are they is it like super gory sometimes uh, uh, see I'm not be. a big fan of that stuff but, but you, it's one of those ones where it's like you, you sit there and you go I wonder if someone could do that or like it's you're, you're almost like enamored by the traps that he makes. Right. That's why I watch it's it. Weird. It's more creative. I like yeah, it's like watching a Final Destination movie or, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. Did we watch the Wonka trailer? Yes. We did. Not the newest oh, one. I used to no, we watched, the, I think, the teaser, but we didn't watch the Wonka trailer. Any interest in watching it or not today? No. Not today? Okay. Well, uh, Wonka trailer's <laughs> out. The Wonka movie comes out in theaters on December 15th. So mm-hmm. what it is, it's a prequel. It's about Willy Wonka coming to London and trying to uh, trying to start up his own chocolate shop but being pushed down by big chocolate. All the people that run the chocolate industry in there are uh, trying I'm to keep you, the man down. I'm telling you, he's dressed like Gonzo. Yeah. He's dressed like Gonzo in a Muppet Christmas Carol and it throws me off every time I see that trailer. Well, I heard he's going to make that chocolate rain. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy? He died tragically and nobody noticed. Going back to his home planet? That's yes, yeah. exactly. Um, oh, also out this weekend, uh, they cloned Tyrone on Netflix. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. That, that comes out uh, Friday. Yeah, today. Yeah. The I mean, what? The director's great. I was going to say the critic reviews are actually like they're giving it high marks. Like, I can't wait to watch this. Awesome. Coming out Monday on Hulu is uh, the reboot of Futurama. So you have that to look forward to. That's some new content. Uh, what else do we have here? 
think Harley Quinn comes out this month. Harley Quinn comes out next week on the 27th, season four. Yep. You can go right now, watch the first three seasons. If you love Venture Brothers, you're going to love the Harley Quinn animated series because it's it's so good. Written almost in the same style. Uh, it's it's off the walls bonkers. Go it's and good. watch that. It's, it's really not good. for kids. It's very um, over sexualized. It's very violent. It's very uh, graphic. It, it it's it's fantastic. And what's his name? The the Los Polos Hermanos from uh, Breaking Bad. Oh yeah, Gus. No, um, <laughs> he plays Lex Luthor and head of the Legion of Doom. It's fucking hilarious. So. Right. Go and check that out. Um, the live action Snow White movie. Peter Dinklage is not a fan. Uh, so, yeah. So they're not called dwarves anymore. It's not Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Uh, when asked about his opinions on the movie, he said, literally no offense to anything, but I was sort of taken back. They were very proud to cast a Latino actress as Snow White. But you're telling me the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Take a step back and look at what you're doing here. It makes no sense to me. You're progressive in one way, but you're still making that fucking backward story about seven dwarves living in a cave together. Have I done nothing to advance the cause from my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. I hope he's joking. Well, if it was Snow no, White, he's and come out se- and said this stuff before. Yeah, if it was Snow White and the Seven Dudes, it would just be like a casting couch video. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, God. we're gonna have to go back to calling the midgets little people. It's part of the story. You, what, what are you supposed to do? But they're called. Uh, there was a new name for them now. Oh, I, just, I don't I see had, the point uh, of redoing all this stuff yeah i'm not a big fan of the live action remakes they've never been great you 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 know it's just stop doing it there's no point this is not believable that she fights seven dwarves the dwarves are now going to be called fantastical beings oh no that seems even worse this is a harry potter movie yeah this doesn't make any fucking sense Whatever, any of these live things are not meant for me or most of the audience. They're meant to attract all new kinds of audiences, so who cares? That's it's, There's no point in getting outraged or upset and all the stuff like the internet loves to do. <laughs> black Little Mermaid! Yeah, well, they're trying to get a black audience to, to like The Little Mermaid and, and, and a new younger audience to like The Little Mermaid. You can go back and watch the original. It's still there. Right, it still exists. Still exists. They didn't. T- it's like we're deleting. Yeah, it, imagine the Disney goes. We're taking all the original stuff and we're putting it back in the vault. That whole vault gimmick that they did in the eighties. You'll never those. see this for another thirty years. Meanwhile, enjoy the brand new Little Mermaid. Okay, I could see getting a little upset that you can't rent it, you can't purchase it. It's not available anywhere. Right. It's not going away. So, whatever. Who gives a shit? Don't worry about it. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be terrible anyway. So. More power to them. Um, I think that is really it for now. Next week, we'll, uh, or two weeks, we'll see if we have any other updates. We'll see what, if anything actually happened at San Diego Comic Con. If not, then, uh, I don't know what else to tell you here. They moved, they moved Good Omens from July 28th, right? No, it's still coming. In fact, I just got an email today with it, um, giving me access to an advanced screening in theaters to watch the first two episodes of the new season. All right, then then this note is still accurate then. July 28th, yeah, should be. which is next Tuesday, uh, Good Omens Season 2 will be available on Amazon Prime. And if you haven't seen the first season, go back and watch it. David Tennant, uh, Michael... It's so good. Michael Sh- Sheer- Sheen? Michael Sheen. Sheen. And uh, it's a Neil Gaiman book. The second one is not based on a book, so Neil Gaiman wrote all brand new stuff for it. So, Right. All right, that is it. We do need to get out of here, so let us do the plugs. Jordan, our nation's eyes turn to you. Uh, Watch Later Pod on Instagram is for my other show, All Watch It Later Podcast. We do movies. We go through you know, snacks and all that fun stuff. Um, this weekend, we're doing our snack show, so a lot of crazy stuff. We've got the Nashville Hot. We're going to do... Um, we got new Snickers bars and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to do that. And then um, if you want to find me on any video game systems or anything like that, Jinx Ronin, um, as you can see right there on the screen. And then uh, come play some games with us. We're doing uh, Diablo a lot lately. So come hang out. All right. Gittles also doing Diablo a lot. 
Yep. Uh, Gittlebase at the Instagram and twitch.tv slash Gittlebase. Uh, I would like to switch uh, stream Diablo 4, but uh, it's hard enough to play it without the game rubber banding all over the place. <laughs> so I don't know how streaming will go, but I might try it this week. What does that mean, rubber banding? It basically uh, means the game tries to load so your character around. will move forward and then bounce backwards and like it just it stutters a lot. Rob was having the same issue me. last night after you'd left. Yeah, it was rubber banding a lot for me, so hopefully mm. it won't be. All right, for long. But yeah, I want to. I want to try streaming it. But like I said, I gotta. I gotta make sure my internet connection and my computer is strong enough. It's an intense game for graphics. Yeah. Yes, and there's some intense leveling up going on with this group, um, <laughs> beating the story. And then it's every night. It's like there's a world event in 30 minutes. I kind of want to go to bed. Nope, we're waiting for 30 minutes. And then <laughs> yep. going in there. Hey Rob, hey Rob. You- there's a there's one more event in t- in 15 minutes. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we stay up way too late. And the new season started today, so this is a whole nother problem. Oh, yeah, so new season of uh, Diablo 4 and the new storyline for Sea of Thieves with Monkey Island. Yeah, the old looks, video game looks, Monkey looks Island really good. is uh, has returned, and now it's part of uh, Sea of Thieves. Also mm-hmm. a Disney property, if you weren't aware. All right. Disney look- uh, for me and the show, it's Eric Nagel across the board on all the social medias. If you're listening to us on the iHeartRadio app, we do appreciate that. But you can join us live each and every week as we do the program. Not next week, but after that, we'll be back again live. Uh, you join us in our live rooms for uh, YouTube and Twitch, also under the moniker, uh, branding, whatever you want to call it. It's Eric Nagel. You can find us there. Like, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, Super chat, bits, tits, all that kind of stuff that you put out there, stickers, yeah. all that kind of show stuff. Show us your bits. All of that, yeah, show us your bits. All that, oh, we should put that into the screen thing there. Um, all <laughs> that is available. And uh, again, if you're on, on Apple or Spotify, if you want to go over there and give us a positive rating, that does help us out. We would appreciate that. And uh, we're good to go. You're not Eric Nagel. I'm Eric Nagel. There we go. Yeah. All right. Let's get out of here. And so, in, uh, screen on me. There we go. Until the next time, everybody. Be excellent to each other. And have a wonderful time. And Giddles is going to sleep. He's Eric Nagel. Yeah, we got a lot of emails about that. Any of them supportive? Not many. Your target audience is dicks. 18 to 34. Bless. We're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itsericnagel.com. And remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. Well, you get the idea. Keep it real, homies.